Hi, I'm Michael from Kitchen Cider. Welcome to the channel. Here's my quick guide to some of the most popular kitchen flooring options. So in this video, I'm going to briefly explain what they are, talk about any considerations to think about, give some pros and cons for each, and a score between one to five for a cost guideline. Right, let's just get into it. Natural stone tiles. Natural stone tiles are a timeless and durable option for kitchen flooring. Each piece is unique with variations in color, pattern, and texture. They're cut to various sizes and finishes, ranging from polished to honed or brushed, large format slabs or smaller and mixed size tiles, giving you a wide range of options to choose from. So some popular types of natural stone tiles, you've got marble, limestone, slate, travertine, sandstone. Some considerations to think about. Sealing, most natural stone is porous and requires sealing to help prevent stains and moisture absorption. Professional installation, I'm not saying you can't DIY this, but typically they're a bit more complicated to work with. The weight, the potential unevenness of them, and the sealing like I said, it's more of a professional job really. And underfloor heating, they are compatible with underfloor heating. In fact, stone tiles are well suited for the use with underfloor heating systems. The thermal conductivity allows the heat to be evenly distributed and retained. So some pros, durability. Natural stone is very durable and can withstand the demands of a busy kitchen. Aesthetic appeal, each tile is unique, offering that natural beauty that can enhance the look of your kitchen, can add value to your home. High quality stone flooring can increase the resale value of your home if that's something that you're considering and thinking about. Good thermal conductivity. Ideal in warmer climates as it remains cool. It can help to regulate the room temperature, although that could also be a con if you live somewhere cold and don't install underfloor heating. But also, as I said, they do work particularly well with underfloor heating to help distribute the heat. And some cons, price, one of the more expensive flooring options due to the cost of the material and potentially the installation. Maintenance requires sealing to protect against stains and moisture, and some stones may require more regular resealing as well. Comfort, it can be a little bit hard and cold underfoot if you haven't got underfloor heating, uh, which may be uncomfortable during prolonged standing. Susceptible to damage. Although they are very durable, some softer stones like marble and sandstone can scratch or etch quite easily, especially if they've not been sealed and maintained properly. But I'd argue that that's part of the charm of natural stone. It's going to pick up some of these stories as it ages. In terms of price, I've given them a four to five out of five. Natural stone is one of the more expensive flooring options with prices varying greatly depending on the type of stone that you choose. Porcelain and ceramic tiles. Porcelain and ceramic tiles are a very popular, versatile flooring option for kitchens known for their durability and wide range of designs. Both types of tiles are made from clay that is fired in a kiln, but porcelain tiles are made from a more refined clay and fired at higher temperatures. This process makes porcelain tiles denser and less porous than ceramic tiles, giving them slightly better durability and water resistance. Ceramic tiles, on the other hand, while still very durable and water resistant, are typically slightly more cost effective. So some popular types, we've got glazed porcelain and ceramic tiles, or unglazed, matte finishes, or full body porcelain tiles. Some considerations, cutting the tiles, porcelain tiles are often harder than ceramic, often requiring a diamond blade for cutting, whereas ceramic tiles can be cut with simpler tools. I'm not saying you can't DIY it with porcelain tiles, but it's likely going to need professional installation. The adhesive and grout. You should use high quality adhesive or mortar suitable for the specific type of tile and consider using a complementary grout and one that resists moisture and stains. Again, if you're not sure, this is likely going to need professional installation. Compatibility with underfloor heating, porcelain and ceramic ceramic tiles are excellent conductors of heat, making them a good choice for underfloor heating systems, so there's no problem there. Some quick pros. Durability. Both types are hard and durable, with porcelain tiles being especially resistant to wear and tear. Water resistance. Porcelain tiles are highly water resistant, making them ideal for kitchens. Ceramic tiles, when glazed especially, also offer good water resistance, but both are pretty good here. Maintenance. They're easy to clean and maintain, requiring just regular sweeping and mopping. For the most part, they don't need to be sealed, although I know some fitters do like to seal the grout. And design variety. They're available in a huge range of colors, patterns, and sizes. 
you're bound to find something that fits your particular kitchen style. And the cons, price. Porcelain tiles tend to be more expensive than ceramic tiles due to their enhanced properties, but both can be expensive depending what you pick. Cold and hard underfoot. Similar to natural stone tiles, without underfloor heating, ceramic and porcelain tiles can be cold and hard, which may be uncomfortable if you're working in the kitchen and standing a lot. Installation. The installation process can be challenging, especially for porcelain tiles, so you're likely going to need professional installation for the best results. Slippery. Some finishes, especially polished, may become slippery when wet, posing a risk for slips and falls and accidents. So depending on your particular circumstances, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Cost-wise, I've given them a two to four out of five. There's such a vast selection of tiles available from basic ceramic tiles to high-end porcelain tiles that the cost really can vary. Solid hardwood flooring. Solid hardwood flooring is often considered a timeless choice for kitchen flooring, offering warmth and character. Made from single pieces of wood, solid hardwood floors can last for generations when properly maintained. The natural grain patterns and colours of wood add depth and a certain charm to any kitchen working with both traditional and modern designs. Some popular options, you've got oak, maple, cherry, walnuts, things like that. And the considerations, acclimation, wood planks need to acclimatize to your home's humidity levels before you fit them to prevent expansion or contraction post installation. Typically they need to be in the room for a week or so to acclimatize. Obviously that room needs to be finished and sealed, windows and doors are in etc. Don't try and rush that process been there before. Professional installation. While experienced DIYs might be able to tackle hardwood flooring, professional installation is recommended to ensure the longevity. You really want hardwood floors done right so that these floors can last a lifetime. Underfloor heating. Solid hardwood is generally not recommended for use with underfloor heating systems due to the natural materials tendency to expand and contract with temperature fluctuations. So the pros. Aesthetics. Solid wood has that natural beauty enhancing the kitchen's overall look and and feel. Durability, with proper care and a little bit of maintenance every now and then, solid hardwood floors can last for decades. Refinishing potential, part of their durability is the fact they can be sanded and refinished several times over their lifespan to restore its appearance or update its finish and increases home value. Hardwood floors are a sought after feature that can increase the resale value of your home. Again, if this is something that you're thinking about. And the cons, cost, one of the more expensive flooring options, both in terms of materials and potentially installation. Maintenance, they are susceptible to water damage and scratches and they do require a bit more maintenance, cleaning and possibly refinishing over the years. Sensitivity to moisture and temperature changes. This is the big one. Solid wood is not ideal for kitchens with high moisture levels. And it's not just if you live in a particularly wet area. The kitchen by its very nature is a humid environment with cooking, cleaning, spills and what have you. Unless you really know what you're getting yourself in for, I'm quite hesitant to use solid hardwood in a kitchen. So cost-wise, I've given it a four to five out of five. Solid hardwood is at the higher end of the price spectrum due to the cost of the wood itself and the installation, which as I said, often requires professional expertise. Engineered wood flooring. Engineered wood flooring combines the beauty of natural wood with the enhanced stability and resistance to moisture, making it my preferred choice if you do want a wooden flooring option. This flooring type is constructed from multiple layers of plywood or high density fiberboard usually cross bonded together topped with a veneer of real solid hardwood. This layered structure minimizes the wood's natural tendency to expand and contract and warp with changes in temperature and humidity. So some popular types just the same as solid hardwood really as that top layer of veneer is just hardwood. So oak, maple, walnut, things like that again. Some considerations, the installation methods. It can be installed using floating, glued or nailed down methods offering flexibility really based on the specific product and subfloor type that you have. So depending on your particular situation and circumstances of the room this could be a little bit more DIY friendly or it might not be. Acclimation. Although engineered wood is less susceptible to environmental changes than solid hardwood, it still benefits from acclimatizing to the room's humidity and temperature before installation. Underfloor heating compatibility. Engineered wood is well suited to use with underfloor heating systems due to its
benefits improve stability. The construction allows for efficient heat transfer and reduces the risk of warping and cracking. So some of the pros, aesthetic appeal offers the look and feel of solid hardwood with more versatility. Moisture resistance, the layered construction provides better resistance to moisture and humidity changes, making it more suitable for kitchens. Durability, it's pretty durable. It stands up well in a busy kitchen. And I'm gonna say ease of installation. It can be easier to install than solid hardwood with some options that are a little bit more DIY friendly. And the cons, cost, while generally less expensive than solid hardwood, high quality engineered wood can be quite pricey. Refinishing limitations. The top veneer layer can be refinished, but it will likely only be able to be sanded and refinished a limited number of time depending on its thickness. Variability in quality. Quality of engineered wood can vary greatly depending on the thickness of the top layer and the core materials used, affecting its durability and refinishing potential. Usually the thicker the top layer, the more expensive they are. Sensitivity to extreme temperature changes. While much more stable than solid wood, engineered wood can still be affected by extreme humidity and temperature changes. So if you do live in a particularly bad area for this, it's something to keep in mind. Cost-wise, I've given it a three to four out of five. Its price can vary widely based on the wood veneer's thickness and quality. And although engineered wood is typically less expensive than solid hardwood, it's still more costly than some of the other flooring options. Vinyl flooring. Vinyl flooring is a resilient, versatile, and affordable option for kitchen floors. Made from synthetic materials, primarily polyvinyl chloride or PVC. It offers a wide range of designs including patterns that mimic natural materials like wood and stone. Vinyl flooring comes in various forms giving quite a lot of flexibility in design and installation methods. Some of the most popular types you've got sheet vinyl, vinyl tiles or luxury vinyl tiles or luxury vinyl planks. Some considerations, installation methods. Vinyl tiles and planks can be glued down or installed with a click and lock system for a floating floor and can be relatively DIY friendly. Acclimation, not near Nearly as bad as wooden flooring, but vinyl flooring materials should ideally be acclimated to the room's environment for at least sort of 24 to 48 hours before you install them. Underfloor heating compatibility. Vinyl flooring is compatible with underfloor heating systems, provided the heating system is properly installed and doesn't exceed the temperature limits recommended by the vinyl floor manufacturer. It's usually fine, but just double check both of those. So some pros, water resistance. Vinyl offers excellent protection against spills, moisture and humidity making it ideal for kitchens. Durability, it is resilient against foot traffic, scratches and stains, suitable for busy households. Comfort, vinyl flooring is softer underfoot compared to tiles, providing a more comfortable surface for standing for long periods of time. Affordability, generally less expensive than many other flooring options. Vinyl offers good value for money. And ease of maintenance, requires minimal maintenance, usually needing only regular sweeping and mopping, nothing special really. And the cons, aesthetic perception. While high quality vinyl can closely mimic natural materials, it may not have the same look or feel as real wood or stone. Environmental impact, vinyl is a synthetic material which raises concerns regarding environmental sustainability ability and indoor air quality due to the VOCs or volatile organic compounds that it can give off. There are lower VOC options on the market but depending on your circumstances this could be a concern for you. Durability variations. While durable low quality vinyl flooring can be prone to tearing and punctures and its lifespan may be shorter than other flooring options. And resale value. Vinyl flooring may not add as much value to a home as natural wood or stone flooring might if that's of concern. Cost-wise, I've given it a one to two out of five. Vinyl is one of the most affordable flooring options with a wide range of products that can fit almost any budget. The cost can vary a little bit depending on the quality and style of the vinyl flooring you choose. Laminate flooring. Laminate flooring is another cost-effective and versatile option for kitchen floors, combining durability with the aesthetic appeal of hardwood, stone, or tile floors. It's composed of several layers, a bottom stabilizing layer, a core layer of dense fiberboard, a high resolution photographic layer that mimics various flooring materials and a tough clear protective top layer. Some popular types of laminate flooring, textured, high gloss or wide plank laminate just to name a few. And some considerations, the installation method. Laminate flooring typically uses a click lock system allowing for a floating floor installation without the need for glue or nails. This makes installation easier and suitable for DIY projects. Acclimation, again ideally laminate planks should be acclimated to the room's environment for at least sort of 48 hours before installation to prevent expansion or contraction after installation. Underfloor heating, laminate floors can be compatible with underfloor 
heating systems if the correct underlayment is used and the temperature guidelines are followed to prevent damage to your laminate flooring. Much like vinyl, you can do it, but just check the compatibility of both. And the pros, cost effective, offers the look of hardwood or stone flooring at a fraction of the cost. Durability, the wear layer provides a significant resistance to scratches, stains, or fading. Ease of maintenance, laminate floors are easy to clean and require little maintenance beyond regular sweeping and mopping. And as I said, DIY friendly installation. Click lock system simplifies installation, making it a popular choice for DIYers. And the cons, moisture sensitivity. While there are more water resistant options available, standard laminate can be susceptible to damage from spills and moisture. If it does get into the core, it can sort of warp and blow the joints. Repair difficulties. Damaged laminate can't be sanded or refinished like hardwood. Instead, planks must be replaced if they become severely damaged, which can be quite tricky. Environmental impact. Similar to vinyl, the manufacturing process and materials used in some laminate flooring can raise concerns about sustainability and air quality due to the potential for VOC emissions. Cost-wise, I've given it a one to two out of five. Similar to vinyl in terms of affordability, laminate offers a cost-effective solution with a variety of design options. Concrete flooring. Concrete flooring is a robust and modern option for kitchen floors known for its durability and minimalist appeal. Typically seen in industrial or commercial spaces, concrete has gained popularity in residential homes over recent years for its sleek look and low maintenance. So some popular finishes, polished, textured, stained, or stamped concrete. Stamped concrete involves pressing molds into the concrete while it's setting, simulating the look of stone, or brick, or other textures. So some considerations. Professional installation. While some concrete floor treatments can be a DIY project, professional installation is recommended, especially if you're going for a more complex finish, such as polished or stained concrete. Curing time. Concrete floors require time to cure properly before they can be sealed and finished. This process can take several days to weeks, depending on the specific treatment and conditions of your home. So not always the quickest flooring to get down. And underfloor heating. Concrete floor is compatible with underfloor heating systems. Its thermal mass allows allows it to store and radiate heat efficiently, making it a pretty good choice actually. Some of the pros, durability, concrete floors are extremely durable and can withstand heavy traffic, making them ideal for kitchens. Low maintenance, they require minimal upkeep beyond just sweeping and mopping, and having your concrete flooring sealed makes them resistant to stains and any moisture getting in. Energy efficiency, thermal mass of concrete floors can help regulate indoor temperatures. As I said, particularly good with underfloor heating and maximizing that, but also good at keeping the room cooler in the summer. And some cons, the hardness. Concrete is very hard, which can be uncomfortable for standing for long periods. Cold, without underfloor heating, concrete can feel cold underfoot, especially in cooler climates. Moisture sensitivity, if not properly sealed, concrete can be porous and susceptible to moisture, leading to potential damage or mold growth. And it might not be for everyone. The industrial look of concrete may not appeal to those preferring a warm more traditional floor appearance. Concrete flooring can be quite a divisive one. Cost-wise, I've given it a two to four out of five, a difficult one. The cost of concrete flooring can vary quite widely depending on the finishes and treatments applied. And just for fun, what flooring would you go for if you could have any in your dream kitchen? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy my guide to popular countertop options. Same sort of thing as this video, but all about countertops. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.